Hi everyone, in this video we wanted to discuss what a registered nurse first assist was and um, just let you know they're often referred to as a RNFA so if you hear that acronym um, just know that it corresponds to the same thing as a registered nurse first assist. So what is an RNFA? An RNFA is a registered nurse, an RN, or an advanced practice registered nurse, uh, APRN, that functions in an expanded role in the operating room. So next we wanted to briefly highlight some of the job functions and cool things that RNFAs get to do at work. Um, so we're going to give a brief list of common responsibilities and then we'll elaborate further on these topics in future videos. And if there's something that maybe you don't understand from this list or is something that you want uh, more information on, make sure to comment or leave us a message and we can further elaborate on the subject, okay? Uh, so first, we help position patients for surgery. We get to uh, prep the surgical site prior to the procedure start. We get to suture wounds. We help apply dressings. We help in the dissection of tissue to gain access to the surgical site. And we uh, help control bleeding uh, with the use of electric cautery and that's often referred to as a bovi. So now that we have discussed some of the common functions of an RNFA, we want to discuss two common paths that nurses take to obtain the title of RNFA. So the first path is the path that both Angela and I have taken. And just to give it a name, we call it like a traditional RNFA. That's just what we've used in this video to refer to it as. But um, so somebody in this role works mainly in the operating room. It's uncommon to see us um, in a doctor's office or a clinic caring for patients outside of the perioperative setting. You may find us on like an inpatient unit doing a dressing change or maybe in PACU giving a handoff report to some of the PACU nurses, but um, most of the day we spend in the operating room, okay? And then we um, typically operate or function in more than one surgical specialty, so a lot of us are cross-trained for example, in a typical week, I may be operating with an orthopedic surgeon one day and then a neurosurgeon the next day, and then I could be on a plastic service the next day. At the end of the week, I could end up in GYN. Um, some traditional RNFAs do choose to stay in and sort of master one service line, and this is common on um, highly specialized teams like neurosurgery, cardiac surgery. Um, but Predominantly what we do is care for patients interoperatively. So now you're probably wondering how do RNFAs get paid? And I promise that we will do a full video on this topic because getting paid for your time and talent is important. But to briefly touch on the subject, a traditional RNFA gets paid as a hospital staff, generally um, through a salary or hourly compensation. In some states, not in all states, um, but hopefully that changes in the future, in some states, RNFAs are permitted to self-bill for services. And in this instance, they're basically self-employed, they're entrepreneurs, um, which I think is awesome. And it's very empowering for these uh, nurses that are in this traditional RNFA role. If you um, look on the other column, in the slide, uh, the second path that is common uh, for an RNFA would be um, to become first a registered nurse and then an advanced practice registered nurse, an APRN, or sometimes they're referred to as a nurse practitioner. Um, and after you become an APRN, you can get a certification to become an RNFA. APRNs that practice as first assists typically divide their time between caring for patients in the operating room and following those same surgical patients in an inpatient or outpatient setting. They also typically tend to work in a specialty that demands a heavy surgical load. For an example, an APRN working in an orthopedic surgical practice that specializes in total joints would find it much more advantageous to have their uh, RNFA certification opposed to maybe an APRN that's working with endocrinologist that specializes in the management of a diabetic patient population. So APRN RNFAs can be an employee of a hospital, they can work for a private practice, 
or they can be self-employed and they can bill for their services. So, and they're able um, to bill for their services much more fluidly than the um, people in the traditional RNFA role. Okay. So now we wanted to talk about some of the functions of an RNFA. What do RNFAs do? Now we know what they are, kind of what do they do? So on a daily basis, things that we do, um, we arrive probably before most of the staff arrives or we arrive early and we ensure that the surgical bed is in the proper position, that we have all the necessary equipment we need for the case. Um, we're, try to ensure that all the machine machinery that we're going to be using is um, in working condition. Make sure that all our surgical sets are there, all the instruments and implants that we need are available. And we are part of the surgical team. So we're working very closely with the nursing staff in the room that's working in the circulating and scrub role, as well as the anesthesia staff in the room um, to make sure that everything is readily available and this patient is safe to proceed with surgery. We also have a very close working relationship with our surgeons. Usually at the beginning of the day, we'll huddle with them to make sure there's anything that uh, any concerns are addressed before the day starts and before procedures start. And if there's any equipment that um, requires implants, there's usually a vendor involved in the case. And we will touch bases with the vendors that have those implants to make sure they're available and correct for the patients that are um, having surgery that day. Some people like to think of the functions of RNFA, the role of the RNFA is a little akin to surgical residents. We are not doctors, we are nurses, but in hospitals where there's not enough resident coverage, we a lot of times perform many of the functions of the resident interoperatively. So again, it's the positioning and prepping, retracting for the surgeon, helping them visualize the surgical site, dissecting, cauterizing, suturing, and we can even help the surgeon during an implant placement of cases with implants. So we get to be the second set of hands to um, surgeons and help surgical patients. So we wanted to thank everybody for listening to our video and we wanted to encourage anybody that's interested in um, RNFA as a potential career to please um, send us a comment, let us know what specifically they want to learn about. Unfortunately, surgical nursing, since we're usually behind closed doors, it's kind of like a secret. Uh, nobody really knows what goes on in the operating room because we don't get a lot of observers. So we wanted to shed light on what we do and let people know that it's an alternative to bedside nursing. So thank you.